December 27th, uh, that would be 1959. 1960. January 7th, 1961. December the 13th, 1961. That was in 1967. In the waterfront city of New Westminster, British Columbia, longshoring was one of the largest resident industries of employment up until the closure of the city's port in the early 1980s. The trade provided local jobs to men and women, and although the work was physically demanding and labor-intensive, many people spent long and enjoyable careers in the longshore industry. The Reclaiming the New Westminster Waterfront Research Project spoke with some longshoremen who worked on the waterfront in the 1960s and beyond, and asked if they could recall how they first got started on the job. My dad's buddy saw that I wasn't working around Christmas time, and he says, hey, it's a good chance of getting on around Christmas time because a lot of guys are celebrating and not, not at work, so I could get on then, and I did. Just, fin uh, just finished school six months before that, and I was skin and bone. I think I weighed 142 pounds, six foot one. In about six, eight months, I started packing on the pounds <laughs> bustle. I was hitchhiking with uh, my brother-in-law from Coverdale to New Westminster, and uh, Bernie LaHaye picked us up. And uh, he asked us if we were looking for work. Uh, we said, yep. Yeah. So next day, that's where we were. So that's how you first started. How did you get a dispatch? When you went to the hall, tell me what you had to do. Yeah, that first day, if you that, can remember. That's a good question. You just stood around waiting for somebody to call you. Put your name up there, obviously. So and when the job came up, uh, you went up. Who was the dispatcher, do you remember? Well, I think it was Heyman. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Heyman. <laughs> what happens then when he calls you up to work? What do you do? Well, you went up on the platform and took your name down, and I guess, and uh, give you a dispatch sheet, and away you went. And a, and a work right. number? Work number, yeah. Yeah. You had to register you. And then... How did you know where to go? Well, I guess uh, you'd have to ask some of the guys, I guess, to, you know, where 1C was, obviously, or 1B. And, but it was Pacific Coast Terminals, obviously, so. Oh, yeah. Man, how old were you at the time? 18. Just a spring chicken. <laughs> <laughs> did you know anybody working there when you started? No. Nope. Nobody. No help. No, uh, no father or uncle or anything like this to get you in there, <laughs> oh, you like most guys had, yeah. you know. But Roger's dad was a longshoreman. Harry Bailey's dad was a foreman on the beach. So that's how I got into longshore. But I came down here and I started when I was 17. In those days, if your dad was like my friend Roger, his, he was on a special board that would get out ahead of me because mm. he was a member's son. They had a member's son's board. And what they did, explained to us was that if the, the father got hurt, then the son could keep money coming into the family. But, you know, us guys were never thought, you know. But uh, it didn't bother me. I accepted it. Mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, so did it take you longer then to get enough hours uh, to work year. your way up the board then, do you uh, think? Roger got in a year ahead of me. Well, he would, you know, instead of, I would get one day a week, and he would get, he'd be getting two, mm -hmm. maybe three days a week. And I'd be getting one. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it is. But if I had a, my, my dad had been a member, well, okay, I'd have been on the board. But then the member's sons by, got it, sort of hated by the other guys. Ah, you're a member's son. You know, <laughs> you got all these privileges. We not, you know. I was a young buck there. Um, I was 17 when I first started. I went down the Longshore Hall, 10th Street in New Westminster, and looking for work and uh, managed to get a job. It was a half-day job uh, working at Overseas Transport, birth four, on handstow lumber. It was quite an experience. Uh, never done that type of work before. It was very uh, different, hard, uh, got a lot of good direction, and uh, survived the four hours. I started on the waterfront because uh, I decided in my wisdom at 15 years old that I was going to quit school and make it on my own. And my dad said, well, that's fine. You can get out and get yourself a job then. And I had friends that were working on the waterfront already. Some of my school chums that were a little older than I was. Uh, my older brother had started here for a while and uh, 
And so I had, I had quite a few friends that were working on the waterfront before I came. So, uh, you know, I, I came down, sat in the hall and weighed it and weighed it and weighed it. And finally, uh, you know, when they ran, ran out of people, they would start picking the people that didn't have a number already. And uh, I was lucky enough to get picked. But it only lasted one day because they found out I was only 15 years old and uh, told me I should come back when I, I the rule at the, of the day was you had to be 18 to longshore. And they told me to come back when I was 18. Well, luckily I, uh, I came back shortly just after I turned 16. Again, I got turned in for being too young, but uh, it just happened that one of my friends, which was also my neighbor, his dad was a long-time longshoreman, and uh, I was arguing with the dispatcher that I was 18 because you never had any identification those days. You just had a, a, a pink unemployment card that you'd, I used to get a new one every year from the time I was 13 until the time I was 18 when I was actually old enough to longshore. A friend of mine, his dad, it was Mr. Andreessen to me, Andy Andreessen, and Norm Andreessen was my was a friend of mine, but he was a couple of years older. Anyways, he tell, told the dispatcher, leave him alone, he's the same age as Norman. And I was okay after that. My dad was already a longshoreman. He started in 1935 working with the North Shore Indians. Uh, so after I got married in 1960, uh, after the fishing season finished, uh, my dad suggested actually that could come down and try and get out of the waterfront. Uh, so, just lucky in those days, uh, uh, it was a father-son sort of a, a agreement. Uh, it wasn't in writing, written form or anything, but uh, it helped you uh, after you got registered to move up. And uh, it was my father being a longshoreman, naturally. Mm -hmm. It was of assistance to me. Oh God, in those days, the work we were doing was something else. You know, carry 180 pound sacks in your shoulders. Well, the father-son clause uh, sort of uh, disappeared. Uh, as a matter of fact, the only place it really works is with the uh, board of directors' sons. So you've got that kind of collusion going on on the waterfront there too, which is unfortunate, but all part of life, I guess.